know, when you think about how you learn best, something you want to learn, it's not timed, it's not competitive, it's not under pressure situation. You have your learning unfolds at its own rate. And if you're worried about, I have to know this and understand this by Tuesday because I'm going to have a test, and if I fail the test, it'll impact my grade and impact my life, that's not an ideal learning environment. The ideal learning environment is, it might take me three or four times of working through this till I really understand it. And so that's one of the luxuries we have you know, at a Waldorf High School like this, is we can create a learning environment so that each student learns at their own rate and then is enthusiastic and engaged and the stress and the, the fear that comes in um, is gone. Human beings are inherently motivated to learn. And when you find something that you love and you, and you become successful, it's that drive for mastery to be successful, that's inherent in us. When they grow up with this sense of hope and goodness and beauty in the world, then they're more resilient to cynicism. And that plants a seed of wanting to learn, wanting to understand, knowing you have the potential to make a contribution and a difference in the world. So that approach to the world, engagement with the world, aliveness in learning is what Waldorf teachers work really, really hard to protect and keep at the center of what we're doing. When we teach math, we serve two masters. We serve the Waldorf curriculum and the ideas about awakening capacities for visual creativity, um, being able to think and picture and spatial reasoning, and also the standard American curriculum. You know, we just took the PSATs in 10th grade and we had, I had several students in my math class who got in the 99th percentile on math on their PSATs. So we're serving both. And it's a tall order, but it's important. And the way we present math that is different is very open-ended so that they're not looking for answers that the teachers wanting them to find but they're developing um, it's a more constructivist approach they're developing their own understanding of the natural relationships inherent in the mathematical world. You know, there's three types of questions we like to have in a high school Waldorf question. One is the routine, here's an answer. The second one is a question that you've never heard before. It's like, oh, and that's happened to me as a Waldorf teacher over and over again. They've asked something, even though I've taught this concept for 30 years, somebody asked something that nobody has ever asked me before. This happens a lot. So there's the question that you haven't heard before. They, oh, I have to think about that. And the third question is the unanswerable question. What is the question that we don't know the answer to? And a good lesson has all those questions in it. We start in first grade with all four processes. Why do we do adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing? We do that because we really focus on the whole to the parts. It's really important, that sense of the whole. There is an inherent orderliness about numbers and mathematical principles. And that can be beautiful and profound for students. It can also be a place of safety where you know in all the uncertainty in the world and all the things that you do, whether or not they're good enough or did, was this paper good enough, in mathematics, when you solve a problem and you can check and know that what you've done is correct and meets it, that is a wonderful experience for students. It's like it can be a touchstone. Like, I know this is right. I know this to be true. And in life, there's so much that we don't know to be true. Anything you want to find out about, you can look on the web and find someone who says black and the other person who says white about the same thing. But in mathematics, there is truth. And that is a gift of mathematics to students, to really be able to live in that if we take these assumptions then we can go and prove just like Euclid did and then what the students do is they get to see in the evolution of humanity in our own history of understanding mathematics what these discoveries did for humans and how it moved us forward as humanity and our ability 
to understand the world, name it, and then create within those constructs. Those are the tools so that you can work with these big ideas. And in Waldorf schools, we bring some of the big ideas in, like projective geometry in 11th grade. I was a math major in an Ivy League school, and I never had projective geometry, and it's standard in every Waldorf 11th grade. So we bring these rich, big, powerful ideas to the students on top of all the computation and the rigor of a standard math curriculum. I explicitly tell the students, you know, intelligence is like physical fitness. I said, if I were to go out to ride, run the mile with you right now, I wouldn't be that good. But if I practiced every day, I would be much more fit and better. It's the same thing with your intelligence. So the more you work out your mind, solve problems, think hard, the smarter you get. And students who have a growth mindset about intelligence take mistakes as, oh, I get to learn how to do this better, what I did wrong. And so that too we talk about in our math classes and I tell them if I were to give you a test and everybody got 100%, what it would tell me is it was too easy because nobody learned anything from doing it. So it's really helping them have this resilience to stretch themselves because that's how you learn. So we have taken what the students have experienced in the lower school and brought it to a depth and an intellectual rigor in the high school that completes the seeds that were planted and then gives the students this complete um, education with a depth and an understanding and a rigor and a resilience and a purpose for going forward in the world. And what we hear from them is when they get to college, they love it, they're engaged, they're so happy to continue their learning. They're, they're, there's a freshness that they keep with them about learning. And the students come to see themselves when they go through the Waldorf High School curriculum. They see the fruition of the seeds that were planted in the lower school. They revisit um, some of the same stories, but with their intellectual capacity from a deeper understanding. So they're able to take what they learned as young children and see the meaning in it. And I think that's what gives them the gift of purpose and direction in their life. So it's a it's a, it's a beautiful melding of the two and it's a finishing of what's begun. And for me to see the way our seniors walk out into the world, the resilience that they have and the depth of their thinking and compassion and um, commitment to their direction is just profound. Since we had the opportunity to start the high school from scratch, we really wanted learning to be at the center. And those of us who've been teaching a while have had the experience that grades can often inhibit learning. If you're focused on the grade, it can take you off the path of, am I learning this? Do I know this well enough? You know, is it okay to make mistakes? And what I tell the students is sometimes failing a test really points out how you didn't understand something or a mistake you make that you're never gonna make that mistake ever, ever again. So we wanted that kind of resilient relationship with learning and to have feedback assessments for the students to be at the center, the learning, not the grade. So that's the richness we look for in assessment, seeing each child, each student as a unique human being, where do they need to go grow, where do they have gifts, and helping them develop the capacities that will serve them um, with anything. And what we found with our high school is as the students go out, they have a real strong sense of who they are, what they want, where they're going, even if they don't know exactly where they're going, they have an idea, I want to be fulfilled in this, or I know this kind of thing really makes me feel alive and I'm going down this path, but I'm not sure exactly what it looks like. And I've been so impressed by our seniors when they do their senior project and what they undertake and how they go out into the world with um, purpose, engagement, excitement, um, and a real strong sense of who they are and how they want to be with others. We ask all the students to do everything. So our students are, everybody's in a play, everybody's in chorus, everybody um, um, 
participates in a musical ensemble. And many of our students, some of our school students are very academically oriented and high academic achievers. And if they weren't at a Waldorf school, they wouldn't be painting and drawing and doing woodwork. Some students who that is really their nature to do the painting and drawing might not take the academic courses that, so we have a rich group of diverse students all participating in a wide, diverse type of activities. We've had students who've come to our high school and have received letters and emails from their parents with intense gratitude for us helping their children find themselves again, find their joy in learning again. One mother said, I have my daughter back now. So there's a honoring in the education and an appropriateness in the education and a um, meeting the students where they are, that many students who come to us from other schools just relax and love learning again and are excited about school again. And that just is so rewarding to not only help our students from our lower school finish their Waldorf education, but also to be able to serve students who've gone to other schools and who found a Waldorf high school really um, take up their own education and their learning. And um, that's why I'm a teacher.